Hey everybody, it's Mark here, and I got another review for you all, this time of Catch the Moon, which I reviewed as part of a collaborative review project a few years ago. Uh, but I went to look it up the other day, I don't even remember why, and I discovered that the website it was posted on no longer exists, so I figured I'll post it again so it can exist. I did add a few things because the original review had the rules explanation elsewhere and so I didn't need to talk about that at all so I added a little bit more to make it a bit more comprehensible but this is essentially what I posted back then as a reminder if you'd like to support me go to patreon.com slash the thoughtful gamer and fun fact I've been doing more YouTube stuff so if you like videos and I promise they are not long and annoying Go to The Thoughtful Gamer on YouTube. I'm trying to get up to a 1,000 subscribers. I'm slowly but surely making my way there. That's kind of a big milestone on YouTube. So hopefully I can get there soon. Here's the review. Catch the Moon is delightful, with its tone somewhere between the destructive madness of Jenga and the serenity of a collaborative art project. Indeed, the win-loss conditions are the slightest form of incentive possible, and I can't imagine anyone ever feeling genuinely competitive over a game of Catch the Moon. Quickly, it shifts from opposition to teamwork as you root for your ostensible opponents to successfully place their ladders in creative and exciting ways. That's right, I said ladders. I don't know what inspired designers Fabian Rufad and Juan Rodriguez to think of ladders for their dexterity game, but it works great. They're an awkward enough shape to both be annoying to manipulate and capable of forming complex, perilous structures. The rules are extremely simple. Roll the die. The die will tell you if your ladder needs to touch one other ladder, two ladders, or if it needs to become the highest point in the overall structure. That last one's the real challenge, and successfully creating a new peak for someone else to later surpass supplies what some might say is an unreasonable amount of excitement. I love how Catch the Moon expresses the reality that often competitive and disparate individual incentives can interact in such a way to result in something greater than the individual parts. Each person wants to place a ladder according to the rules, but together the players are, unknowingly, building something beautiful and unplanned. It's a type of spontaneous order. Such phenomena are not easily captured by games, which often feel pressured to shoehorn in a single winner even if the theme doesn't promote that. But as I've talked about on the podcast, it's very difficult to step outside the win-loss binary without simultaneously leaving the realm of game. The dreamlike art and presentation are in Catch the Moon's favor. I particularly enjoy the stately, tongue-in-cheek book of figures housed in the rule booklet that shows possible ways to connect the ladders. Unlike many games where the presentation is wafer-thin, Catch the Moon improves as you dwell on the Quahodian absurdity of stacking ladders on a cloud to reach the moon. The fact that failure is met with tears from a weeping moon is the cherry on top. My friends and I have quickly ritualized a simultaneous frenzied cry of the moon weeps to further accent the shame. The neighbors haven't expressed any concern for us yet. Thanks for listening. You can see this review and others at thethoughtfulgamer.com and you can support me at patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer.